foreign markets to the... Uh we interrupt ABC News with this local 4 o'clock news update as you take a live look at the Pentagon six hours after what uh, law enforcement sources say was a Boeing 757 American Airlines flight that crashed into this symbol of U.S. military might. You're looking... Sorry, Kathleen, uh, that was a scene from earlier today. Uh, nearly an hour ago, uh, rescue people were... rescue personnel were still trying to get people out of the building. Uh, flames were still coming out, and um, we understand that uh, this has gone to three alarm blaze and that fire officials from all over the Washington region have been called in to help fight the blaze. There are people still inside, uh, and uh, rescue attempts are still being made to get some of those people out. Now, patients have been taken to hospitals throughout the area. Not only has there been tremendous building carnage, but human cost as well. And we want to bring you up to date on where some of those folks have been taken. First of all, Virginia Hospital Center is reporting they've received 30 injured from the Pentagon. Washington Hospital Center, five critical injuries. George Washington Hospital, two are now in the emergency room. And Alexandria Inova Hospital reports that they have received five patients in fair condition, one in critical, one in good. And again, as Maureen said, uh, these uh, numbers continue to mount as the afternoon progresses. We also have some more information uh, from uh, Paris Glendening in Maryland. The governor says that the head of the state police in Maryland got a list of 11 sites across the country that were apparent targets of these terrorism attacks. Two of those sites were in uh, Maryland, the Baltimore World Trade Center and the state capitol in Annapolis. Of course, uh, those sites have not been hit, but we're just sharing that information with you. Also, Congressman uh, James Moran in uh, uh, Virginia says he received information today that that plane that crashed in Pennsylvania, here's some uh, video of that site, may have been headed for the presidential retreat at Camp David. Apparently, uh, Mr. Moran says that apparently this hijacked plane went down in western Pennsylvania. It was meant to crash at Camp David, which of course is the presidential retreat. You know, to understand the magnitude of this, you have to imagine something like the Oklahoma City uh, bombing, where you had a major federal building, such as the Pentagon, combined with a 757 airplane crash. That conveys the magnitude of what we're confronting here in the nation's capital. We'll continue to break in at about uh, 4 30. We'll be back with more news. And meanwhile, we want to join ABC News in progress. Casualties uh, were like, um, and he said, more than anyone can bear, more than anyone can bear. And I think that's the clear casualty, uh, the dead and the wounded people that we are going to, uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to have today. But as Betsy has just uh, made clear in terms of business and in human beings, including I had no idea that Morgan Stanley had 50 stories of the World Trade Center. Um, these statistics you see that we put up on television from time to time are the just the sort of bare, cold background uh, to life <coughs> and death stories which have taken place today. But the impact of this has gone so far beyond New York City. And, and just as you, as you look at, that's a live shot of New York City now, a live picture of of what's happening down inside that dreadful little rectangle of violence which is hidden behind the glamour and success stories of the buildings to the right and to the left. The Federal Avi Aviation Administration, as you know, we shut all airports nationwide. The Greyhound Bus Service canceled all of its, or the Greyhound Bus Company canceled all of its services in the Northeast. Um, Amtrak, the, the railroad, uh, temporarily suspended train service all along the Northeast Corridor between Boston and Washington and the U.S. section of the St. Lawrence Seaway which is between northern New York State for the most part <clears throat> and Ontario between the U.S. and the Canadian borders there has been closed. Uh, the tunnels between Detroit and Windsor on the Canadian side of the Detroit River closed to car traffic um, and security just went bang up several levels at all U.S. Canadian border crossings in large measure because there has been a penetration across the U.S. Canadian border before. Um, one of the ones they caught when an alert agent, as we've said several times today, picked up a guy on his way where he thought to bomb the Seattle Space Needle. Turned out he was really interested in setting off a bomb inside Los Angeles International Airport. The space shuttle operations were halted today. 12,000 employees of the Kennedy Space Center in Florida were actually sent home. 
and at the Naval Weapons Station in Goose Creek, South Carolina, workers were evacuated and sent there. Again, evacuations and people being sent home from the very heart uh, of the military establishment. Betsy Stark has just told us that all U.S. financial markets were closed. The United Nations building was evacuated here in New York City. Uh, General Motors, General Motors in Detroit gave all 6,000 employees who work in the Renaissance Center, one of those centers built to try to rejuvenate downtown Detroit, were all told to go home today. And the Ford Motor Company closed its world headquarters in Dearborn in Michigan. The IRS in various places closed. The popular skyscrapers uh, were closed and or evacuated in, in, all, in, in, in cities uh, all across the country. I think you probably already heard us say, if you've been with us for much today, that the New York primary election uh, was canceled here in New York and Governor Pataki said they'll simply reschedule it when they get another handle on normal life uh, in, in, in the days ahead and tourist attractions of a list of tourist attractions Knott's Bray Farm in California the Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles and the Library Tower in Los Angeles the Liberty Bell Independence Hall the Space Needle Walt Disney World they all closed down today what what better way, even though it's just a list of things, or it is a list of things, an understanding that both at home and overseas, embassies at overseas were evacuated, embassies were closed. Tony Blair, the British Prime Minister, forbid civilian aircraft from flying around London. So these two attacks on the Trade Tower and the one in the Pentagon and the, and the possibility of, uh, uh, of an attack on Camp David, we now believe, in the aircraft that crashed not far from Johnstown in Pennsylvania, all just had this extraordinary impact all over the world because people feared something else was going to happen and may still fear that something else is going to happen. Listen, just listen to some of what has happened today. I saw something hit the second tower and when I saw that it just was everything rumbled and I saw all this fire just shoot out in the sky and stuff started just falling like, like it was raining and I I was by myself and I just ran. I started seeing people um, just uh, they started jumping out of the window like at the 96th floor. They just started uh, one at a time from different parts of the building. I just started seeing people just drop, drop, and drop. I saw a man walking up the block and I asked him, was this covered in soot? And my first question was, did they get a lot of people out? And the look in his eye, he just shook his head. I mean, he was in a daze. We lost all visibility, and we assisted people getting out. It was very difficult to get out of where, uh, the police desk area. Um, and then I went back in, and we were, we were carrying an injured person out, myself and about four firemen. And um, unfortunately, that's when the building two collapsed. I happened to dive underneath the ESU uh, vehicle and I'm not sure what happened to the fireman. The vehicle, I was, I was, I was, um, I was trapped for about 15 minutes under the truck. It just rained building, okay? And, and I was buried alive for 15 minutes until I scrambled out. We're just putting a microphone on a young man who's joined me here in our newsroom in New York uh, named Kevin Sudovy, who is a young publisher. And take that visitor sign probably off your, off your shirt as well. Um, and I don't know much about you except that you're a publisher and you have been shooting some video today which you have brought with you. Can you give me a sense of what it is? Well, when you see it, I mean, basically I was right, right there. I went there. I, somebody called me up. I was in Brooklyn. And uh, my photographer last night shot it, and I, I wanted to see if she was, I tried to call her, but all the phones were jammed. So I went to Manhattan to see her, and then I went straight to the, um, to the site, and they weren't letting me, anybody in, but I had a motorcycle, so I went straight in. And I kept going through all the levels of security, and I just went around, and then next thing I knew, I was like, standing right there, like where everybody, the fire people, everybody just, everybody just sitting there, like they didn't, there's nothing they can do. You're talking about point. the Trade Tower, are you? Yeah, and, and, I see and, footage. and somebody was photographing at the Trade Tower last night? Yeah, I had, she shot the last, probably the last photo ever shot at the Twi Trade Center. Okay, sure. let's have a look at what you have, and do you mind uh, just taking us just through it as we watch it on the air? How much, how much video is there here, do you know? 
Uh, this is, this is footage. Oh my goodness me. That's this is the uh, that's the um, all that's standing of the twin towers right now in the background. That's all that's standing. That's it. That's all that's left. So you are literally right inside. Um, What time did you actually photograph? I don't even know. That, that was good. actually I rode my motorcycle right up from there. That was like about that was about an hour ago, not even. And this is right at the center of where the trade right, towers right stood. You can until... see, like when you see the firemen, they just there's nothing they can do. It's just like amazing. You must have been frightened at the very least to be there. Uh, I mean, I was just I was just thinking to myself how what a powerful uh, act of ignorance it was, really. And this is amazing. And this is the building I adjacent couldn't believe to... It. That's the Twin Tower. That, that right. was the Twin Tower. That was the other tower. That's the... And then we went up into more into there. You know, I, re I just thought to myself I can smell it, but in fact yeah, what I can do is smell your yeah. shirt. Yeah. You brought the smell of just this disaster with you on your T-shirt. Were there other people in there? There's any? I don't see any any uh, anybody sort of. You know, no, I was when I was with one other person. I ran into there who actually is somebody I know, and he was ph photographing as well. And it was just us two and the firemen. It's funny. I ran into my friend right there who was also taking pictures. He should be some. They probably edited him out. It's absolutely. Look at that. That's all that's left. That's, that's Do you know whether it. that's the South Tower or the North Tower? That's the South Tower. And you saw no sign of life in here no, whatsoever? No, I went, I went all the way right there. Like, I don't know if they edited it out yet, but there's a big <coughs> hole going down to the ground. There's nobody. And then we ran into somebody else because they haven't seen anybody. Nobody. But the firemen said, you know, that there's been a lot of people dead, like a lot of firemen died. Because there were firemen in the building at the time trying to help people evacuate from the building. Yeah. They said two, 200 people died. I thought the fireman I saw too said 200 people died already. And this this wall here, this is from part of the tower yeah, itself? Yeah, that's the south tower, the, the, the lobby. And it's all the smoke and there's still fire going on in there right now. Are you walking across? Yeah, see, you're, that's you're walking across the, and that's your yeah. friend yeah. also with the, yeah. with the photograph. And yeah. the building on the right that occasionally appears in, 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 is in a building adjacent? Yeah, and it's just gouged. Like the parts of the Twin Tower just gouged out the... Building. See, that's the this concourse below. That's going down like 20 feet or so. But that's that's the part that's crazy. It's just that's all that's left. Did you hear anything while you were in there? Just like cracklings and pops and stuff. See, that's, that's the guy who's been looking for his friends, and he didn't find anybody either. And do we know who this person is? No, he, he was speaking uh, Russian. Really? Looking through the to the devastation and this now is what this is a party actually so last night no it's a while ago but mm. well, where was the party in uh that was in uh, ps1 oh so so you just simply decided to go in there to see what you could what you could photograph yeah i wanted it because i it's funny because the name of my magazine is prophecy and we had just shot the twin towers last night my photographer amy had just been shooting it with a 4x5 fi uh, format last night. And I hadn't spoken to her yet, and then my friend called me this morning and said, did you hear what happened? And I said, no, and then, so I went to, like I said, I went to the city to see Amy because I couldn't reach her, all the phones were down. And so I went to, uh, I went right to, uh, to the site. Were you, were you doing a feature on the Twin Towers, were you? Well, basically I was photographing the Twin Towers for, for the power of the Twin Towers, architecturally and like metaphorically what they stood for, then, you know, these people, you know, wanted to destroy them. I was kind of, you know, I was, uh, I was observing them more. We have been shooting it for over a week. Really? And it's ended in this vulnerable place? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can I just get one other thing clear? You managed to get right onto the site itself, right onto the top of, of, of one of the two towers. Right. But I couldn't see any Police, I couldn't see any fire department. Well, they were all back there. We went, I went right into it. They were all like just around it. Did you have any sense when you were walking on it that it was too dangerous to be on? No. Well, you know, they were the, when we, when we first started walking in, the fire people were all like, no, don't go. But we just went in. And you we never wanted heard, to see. And you never heard a sound except the sound of Yeah, there was no fire people, cracking. there was no nothing. There was just glass breaking and stuff like that. Hmm. 
Well, Kevin, thank you for this. Kevin Sudovy. He's a publisher of a magazine called Prophecy. And he thanks very much, Kevin, for coming. Anything else you can think of? Just. I mean, I just wanted to say I think that it's a powerful act of, of ignorance at the end of the day because this country is so full with so many different types of people. And I, I can understand, um, you know, people and their frustrations with capitalism and, and other, just capitalism. I can understand people's frustration. But to, to, to do that type of destruction to people they don't even know, it's just, like I said, it's powerful. I understand they're trying to make, get a message across, but it's also powerfully ignorant. In my opinion, that's all I can say. That's all well, I want to say. I think, it's a thing that, I, think, I think it's a thing that many people in the country agree with today, uh, that it was an act of terror and an act of ignorance, and, and which the government has said repeatedly today it'll try to get to the bottom of, but nobody's very hopeful about I that. I mean, it's obvious that, the, that there needs to be a better dialogue between you know, these people and what they need done and what what we're doing and uh, they're, they're bringing the uh, the field to a whole nother level mm -hmm. but um, I, like I said I understand to an extent but mm -hmm. the, the, it needs to go further than I think than what they're doing well we're grateful as a news organization that you decided to bring that video in here thanks very much Kevin so to be because it gives us the closest the most intimate sense we have seen yet of what it is like at ground zero in terms of the building collapsing in on itself. And I think that George Stephanopoulos can add to the status of the building and also, George, to the current police activity. I must, weren't you a bit surprised to see nobody in there besides young Mr. Sudovy? Nobody at all. It really was surprising, although it did accord with what we'd heard earlier, Peter, and now we've just heard from our, one of our reporters, Lucy Kerrigan, who's gotten quite close, that the police are actually pulling back from the scene right now. The police and other rescue personnel are pulling back from the scene because they're concerned about two things. Number one, all of the asbestos in the air coming out from that smoke from the collapsing building. And secondly, the possibility of other buildings collapsing in the area. So they've actually pulled away now um, from ground zero, if you will. Secondly, Peter, another, another grim note. Um, we have now heard that Chelsea Piers, which is a large several block long athletic complex over here on the west side at 17th Street and 11th Avenue has now been turned into an, a temporary hospital and morgue here in Manhattan. It's the first temporary hospital and morgue that's been set up. There are now 30 ambulances operating out of there and that will be one of the major sites here on the uh, lower west side. Thanks very much, George. Actually, we're now looking at some more footage that Kevin Sotheby's taking. Kevin, just tell us where this is. What is this? This is on the, uh, on the West End Highway. And um, I can't remember the other street. You can't tell this. You really can't tell. But it's right there where the South Tower was, where the Marriott was. The Marriott Hotel, yeah. the Marriott uh, Hotel headquarters there, and and you're you're still focused very much on the on the Trade Towers itself. Aren't yeah. You? And on the rubble, it's just amazing. It's the cars, the ambulances are all crushed. Lights are still going. Horns are still being, you know, are still blowing. Is there, is there, a, did you pick up there was some sense of activity here, that there was some sense of purpose, or just people overwhelmed by what had happened? I mean, the uh, fire department? Fire department, the police, There's nothing the other they could do. They, were, they said that there were already 200 firemen dead. They were just, you know, it was futile. They it said uh, it's bigger than there, there's not enough people. There's just a handful of people there. Because so many firemen were working to get other people out when I mean, this actually not, happened. Yeah. I mean, you need an army of people to, and of course, the city will have an army of people before long because the National Guard is coming in. Uh, it's very interesting what the, the mayor said some time ago. He said people need relief, desperately want relief. At the same time, they don't want relief because they don't want to leave the job they are doing uh, because in many cases they are uh, looking for and or supporting their friends and the colleagues. And, and that's a, a bit of a review there of some of the material that, that uh, Kevin Sotheby shot uh, earlier in which we're very glad to have. Um, I'm just looking at, at one more report from our foreign desk here this morning that a KAL plane, Chuck Lustig, a KAL plane, KAL, you mean the Korean, Korean Airlines plane? Thanks very much. A Korean Airlines plane was forced down by U.S. and Canadian forces over White Horse Bay in Canada earlier today. The Canadian Television reports that forces on the ground stormed the plane 
and we have no other details at this time, but there's another <coughs> aberrant incident uh, today happening in, in Canada. U.S. military throughout the world, uh, we've said before, are on the highest state of alert. So from what's, what's, what's spread out from here um, has just been quite extraordinary in terms of putting everybody in the world. Uh, most U.S. military forces on threat condition Delta, which is the highest uh, uh, condition uh, that the military, the highest alert the military can be on. Um, but as, as any number of people have reported today, any notion that the U.S. was invincible died in this, uh, in, in this rubble. Um, listening, to some of the, listening to some of the politicians talk today, Senator Chuck Hagel of Nebraska, where the president is at the moment, uh, said America is forever changed, and America's in for a long fight, which I think people in the, in the, in the fight against uh, terrorism understand and have understood for a very long time. But somebody else said this is a huge wake-up call for the United States, both former Secretary of State Baker and I think the former director of the CIA said that, uh, that there, was, there was just not enough human intelligence on behalf of the United States and these organizations and cells around the world. John McCrethy, our Pentagon correspondent, has just come from a Pentagon briefing. And um, so we'll pick you up, John. John, yeah, what are you hearing? Uh, Peter, one of the things they wanted to do and do very publicly is to deal with the rumor that had been circulating for several hours that uh, the fourth civilian jetliner that was hijacked was shot down by American uh, aircraft. They are denying that flatly. They say it is absolutely not true, Peter. John, I apologize. I was distracted. And so for the benefit of anybody else was distracted, I mean, do you mind repeating that? I'm sorry. They are denying the rumor that had been circulating for several hours that the U.S. military shot down one of the civilian jetliners. They are saying that is absolutely oh. not true. Okay, thank you, John. You caught me off balance because, in fact, I'd never heard the rumor in the first place and not heard, and not heard the report whatsoever. Now, you've been in a briefing. What else did you hear? Um, well, they're not saying a whole heck of a lot. What they are saying is that they now have accounted for the presence uh, of all of the Joint Chiefs, the service secretaries, uh, and of course the Secretary of Defense. Those are people who have been accounted for. Um, what we are now learning is that um, a new part of the Pentagon that uh, is, has just been occupied was one of the areas that was terribly hit. Uh, we believe there are going to be quite a few casualties from the Army, the Navy, and the Marine Corps in particular, uh, as well as the Defense Intelligence Agency. Do you have any, under, any idea what the num quite a number of casualties means? Uh, no idea whatsoever, Peter. Uh, you consider the density uh, in the Pentagon. There are 20 to 24,000 people that work there. Uh, it took out one huge slice of it. Uh, so you have to do your own arithmetic. Uh, if you look at the size of the gash over my shoulder, uh, you have to believe that there are many, many hundreds of people who died. And what have the briefers had to say this afternoon, John, about the state of alert in the, uh, in the world generally, with all U.S. forces on such a state of alert? I'm sorry, before you go to that, we're just looking at a picture which gives us, I think, the best view yet, if this is an accurate drawing, um, of... of of what the degree of damage or penetration of the plane will have been to the Pentagon. I'm not sure that's absolutely accurate, but by the way, ABC's Ann Compton tells us the president may be on the move again, and ABC's Charlie Gibson has information as well. Charlie? Well, Peter, there's going to be hundreds, I guess, and we don't know the number of personal stories that are going to come out of this, people who have died in the World Trade Center or at the Pentagon or on the airplanes that were hijacked and crashed in various places. We now understand the wife of Ted Olson. He is the Solicitor General of the United States. Mm. America came to know him because he's the man who argued the President's case in front of the Supreme Court, George W. Bush's case in front of the Supreme Court. He was not yet President when the case of the Florida election was being disputed before the Supreme Court. Ted Olson's wife, Barbara, who is a former federal prosecutor herself. She was on the plane that crashed into the Pentagon. We had heard this from friends of the family. Regrettably, it has now been confirmed. She apparently was able to make a phone call to her husband, the Solicitor General, Ted mm -hmm. Olson, and tell him they were being hijacked, that all of those on board the plane, that is American Airlines Flight 77, that had taken off from Dulles Airport heading for Los Angeles this morning, a 757, 
uh, that had 64 people aboard. All of the passengers had been herded into the back of the plane. Uh, she was able to get a call out saying they were in the process of being hijacked, and then shortly after that, uh, the plane crashed into the Pentagon. Uh, she was herself, as I say, a former federal prosecutor. She had also become familiar, I think, to many uh, in the viewing audience of television as a commentator recently over the situation of Gary Condit. Indeed, I'd had a chance uh, to talk with her a couple of times on Good Morning America just in the past couple of weeks. So we're going to hear hundreds of these stories of people who were killed in, in the various venues that were affected today. But uh, this one, obviously, is very painful, the wife of the Solicitor General of the United States. Peter. Thanks very much, Charlie. Uh, and I, I think in the whole day, this is the first name we've had of anybody who's died. The first name, the first personality, even to hundreds and thousands of families around the country. The names and personalities are all from many familiar people they fear are in trouble, who know they're in trouble, who've been confirmed they're in trouble. The desperation of people at some remote, at a distance from people in trouble is just a horrendous thing to report. But I believe that's the first name we've had all day of being able to identify somebody, Barbara Olson, who, as Charlie says, was very often on television, the wife of the Solicitor General, Ted Olson, uh, who died in the suicide attack on the Pentagon. John McCrethy, you still there? It's Peter. Yeah. John, come back to the briefing, if you would. I'm, I'm not sure we've heard everything from you on the briefing itself. Uh, they just are expressing their frustration and at the difficulty of getting rescue workers inside the Pentagon, Peter. Uh, part of the building is still on fire, uh, and the fire is moving to sections of the Pentagon uh, along roofs and along various pipes. Uh, so they're having a real difficulty getting in there even to search for bodies at this early time. That is what they are focused on at this point. I will tell you, Peter, that Donald Rumsfeld, the Secretary of Defense, and most of the chiefs uh, have been in the National Military Command Center all day uh, since this terrorist strike. Uh, and you have to leave it up to your own imagination, the kinds of things that they are contemplating uh, in their hours uh, after the strike. Okay, John, thank you very much indeed. John McCrethy, who's been at the Pentagon all day and was in the other side of the Pentagon <clears throat> when this aircraft was crashed into the Pentagon today. We now know with all of the passengers on board, at least in this one phone call, herded to the back of the plane. Uh, who went from being passengers to hostages in a, in, in a matter of, of seconds and minutes. Um, and John, who was working on the other side of the Pentagon, has said a couple of times that just on the other side of the Pentagon, you just felt this huge, just knew exactly that something had gone by. And when he first described the, the width of the gash and the height of the gash, six stories high, 200 feet wide, uh, which you can't appreciate on television, quite frankly, as much as you think you can. And, and we've had several reports in from Martha Raddatz at the State Department, um, which I think most of, the, most of them we've had on the air so far, which was the State Department ordered U.S. embassies around the world to close for the day, but it's up to the individual embassy, given, on the, given the situation that they think uh, is appropriate in their region. Many have closed for the day. Uh, Secretary of State Powell, who's been in Colombia, uh, is on his way home tonight, but we do not know actually where he is at, at the moment. I told you just a moment ago that Ann Compton, who's been with President Bush all day, uh, believes that he is on the move, or they are on the move again, and one can only believe, I shouldn't say that, one can only, we didn't think they were going to go to Nebraska, we can only imagine that there's this pressure to get the President back to the nation's capital. And um, the State Department was evacuated at the time, uh, this world, there's actually been a worldwide caution about terrorist activity out and about uh, universally uh, since the 7th of September, but it had absolutely nothing, nothing whatsoever to do uh, with what happened in New York City and in Washington today and what potentially happened, we we're told, at Camp David based on the information from one passenger who called 911 from the United Airlines that crashed near Johnstown, which said that they were headed in the direction of of, of Camp David. The New York Stock Exchange and the American Stock Exchange have both announced that they will not trade tomorrow and they will make a decision tomorrow on when trading will resume. The country has, in many ways, come to a halt, not completely by any means, because every politician has spoken and had a chance to speak today has made the point that if you, if you change too much in the country, you're doing exactly what the terrorists 
and their allies would like you to do. Linda Douglas on Capitol Hill. Linda. Good afternoon. This is Maureen Bundyan with Dale Walters at ABC7. We are showing you a live picture of the fire, which is still going on at the Pentagon this afternoon. Uh, this is in the wake of this terrible, terrible terrorist incident uh, early this morning. Uh, so far, there have not been uh, accounts of all the personnel in the Pentagon. Rescue efforts of those who are injured and in that building are uh, still going on, as you can see. And uh, just a little while ago, there was a briefing outside the Pentagon about the situation there. Let's uh, show you what, uh, what the Pentagon officials had to say. Uh, right now, they're still working on the fire. We have smoke throughout the, the uh, building. We're fortunate in this part of the building in that the part of the, where the plane hit, one part of it was just beginning to be occupied. Some areas had just been renovated. So part of it was occupied, but not all of it. As I just told you, the Navy and the Marine Corps say that not everyone in the Pentagon has been accounted for so far. If you work in the Pentagon, they want you to call this toll-free number. That's for both civilian and military workers. Please call this number, 1-877-663-6772, and let the Pentagon officials know that you are all right and accounted for. Dell And Maureen, uh, we just received the special late edition of the Washington Post. The headline reads, Terror Hits Pentagon World Trade Center. Uh, we'll get a shot of it on camera three here. But uh, that is the way that it is officially being recorded, history being recorded as of this day. Undoubtedly, this is one of those days where people will say, I was standing at such and such a place when it happened. We want to bring you up to date also on the number of injuries that are taking place. We have some graphics that we'll bring up on the screen. We are receiving reports that 31 injured parties have been taken to Virginia Hospital Center. Another five people are listed in critical condition at the Washington Hospital Center. George Washington Hospital has two people still in the emergency room at this point. Alexandria Anova Hospital, we are being told, has 10 people there. Uh, actually, we are being told that is 14 people, 10 of them in fair condition, one in critical condition, and three in stable. Perhaps if there is any bright side to all of this so far, and I repeat, it is early, but so far we have received no word of any fatalities yet. Yeah, thank you. We uh, go back to ABC News with Peter Jennings right now, of course, but uh, we'll have more for you on ABC 7 News at 5 o'clock this evening. Taken out of the city to a secret location. They had just been moved down the street. Yes, that's right. We have been told that they were taken out of the city. Helicopters came and picked them up on the ground, some of them. We don't know which ones got into the helicopters because it was just too far away for us to see and took them out of, uh, out of uh, Washington. But okay. it could be to someplace very close. Thanks very much, Linda Douglas. Going to go to Lynn Sher and talk about the aircraft involved today in just a minute. Before we do, just want to give you some other examples of how this has affected the country as a whole. The Emmys. Uh, which were going to be held in Los Angeles, the Latin Grammys, which were scheduled uh, uh, their award ceremonies uh, for tomorrow night, I think the Latin Grammys, uh, have now canceled or postponed their particular celebrations. We told you earlier or about some of the other examples, but uh, aside from looking at that list on the screen itself, think of this, aside from the work stoppages, this is the first time this is the first time since D-Day in 1944 that organized baseball has wiped out a whole day of regular season play. First time since D-Day in, in 1944, the landing of the Allied forces on the beaches at Normandy, which led ultimately to the liberation of Europe um, from the Germans. It's the first time since 1944 that organized baseball has done that. And there were couple, all of the television shows in New York City, which <clears throat> the David Letterman show the, and, and others on CBS which all get um, television audiences, popular audiences coming from around the country. They've all canceled their, if their tapings. They'll be out there in reruns uh, tonight. This is true of the late night show on, on NBC. Um, malls across the country, malls across, you, you, some of you who live out around about the country, you all know this better than we do, but malls around the country uh, simply lock their doors and people couldn't go and shop in the malls today. It was this feeling that anywhere there were people gathered, uh, that there was a measure of vulnerability which we had seen uh, in New York City. <clears throat> now, the mayor of New York City, Rudolph Giuliani, says at the moment that at least 2,100 people have been injured and 600 of them taken to hospitals. 
and that there were 1,500 walking wounded who have been taken to uh, Liberty State Park, which is on the other side of the New York Harbor there, uh, where the Hudson River meets the harbor. It, it may be live, but I'm not quite sure what you're looking at. Is this from the New Jersey side? This is from Liberty State Park, uh, looking, I assume, across the New York Harbor uh, at an earlier point today because the smoke is not as thick now as it was. That's live. That's a live photograph. And that is that dark smoke is still coming from the trade tower itself. Thank you. Um, as for the attack on the Pentagon, the Virginia Hospital Center in Arlington, Virginia, reports uh, there have been as many 31 people injured there and admitted to the hospital, including two who are in surgery. <clears throat> and, and most other patients are in intensive care, are in, in intensive care, or are being treated for smoke uh, immolation. I'm joined by Tom Humphreys, but I don't know much more about you, Mr. Here. Humphreys, than that. You were in the World Trade Center on the 57th floor. Yes. And you walked out. Yes. So take us from the beginning, would you? Well, I was sitting at my desk working on a uh, speech I was supposed to give this afternoon, and you. the building was rocked by an explosion. And Which tower were you in? I was in Tower 1. Right. And the next thing I knew, I saw flaming debris uh, cascading down uh, the side of the building. And um, I was in the 93 bombing, right. and I knew this one was a, was, was a lot worse. So uh, we went out on the floor. And basically, you work for a business in the building. Uh, I work for a law firm in the building, right, right. and basically went on the floor, uh, tried to figure out what was going on, uh, figure out whether we should evacuate or not. Uh, about five minutes into that, we decided that it was best to get out. You were in the south. You were in the south tower. Uh, we were in the north. Oh, tower. Sorry, in the north tower. North tower, right. which is one world <clears> trade. <throat> right. Uh, decided that it was time to get out. Our office manager heard that the plane had been, uh, that the building had been hit by an aircraft at the 90th floor. So we assumed that, that the problem was above us and uh, that we could evacuate. And that's what folks did. Did you think at the moment that it was a terrorist attack? Did you think it was I an had, accident? Did you have the biggest I, idea? I had some idea there was a bombing. Having been in the uh, 93 uh, incident, that kind of explosion just doesn't happen normally. I didn't know what it was. Um, but uh, when I heard there was a plane that he had, I thought that made some sense. And, and I thought that it was very unlikely that, a, that any kind of plane would hit the Trade Center uh, accidentally, mm. you know, on a clear day. So... Uh, was there... Uh, how, uh, how immediate, how deep was the concern in your colleagues and, and out on the common halls? Was there panic at all? No, that's the, the one thing what, what, what I found is, is that no panic. Uh, people were concerned. People are a little apprehensive, uh, and they want to know what to do. Um, but uh, both on the floor and then uh, down the stairwell, there was no panic. And in fact, people were helping other people uh, to an incredible degree. Were the stairwells lighted? Yes, this time they were. Last time they weren't. Th this time the stairwells were lighted. There was some smoke, but that was, uh, it wasn't nearly as bad. Was there emergency lighting? Uh, yeah, there was. Um, there was no other, you know, there were no fire or police personnel. Uh, at that point, you're on your own. Now, you came and down from the 57th floor. Were yes. other people coming down from the floors above yeah, you and below you? they were coming you? down uh, <clears throat> from the floors above. There were some injured people that came down, apparently, from you know, floors where this had happened. And so uh, we saw them as well. And how long did it take you to get out of the building? You know, I, I estimate it took me 45 minutes uh, or more to get out of the building. And, and in the time that you were coming down, there was another aircraft hit the southern. Yeah, tower. I was on the 44th floor trying to get down, and, and we heard another you know, explosion. We didn't know what it was. We again saw flaming debris, and uh, uh, I now know that that's you know that was the second aircraft that hit. I think so. you maybe know where I'm going. You were on the you were on the 90th floor. It took you 45 minutes. 57. 57 floor. floor. There were people coming down from floors above you. Right. Is it your sense that in at least your tower, before the tower collapsed? Everybody or a large number of percentage of people managed to be evacuated? I, th I think a lot of people got out. First of all, it was uh, 8.45 in the morning, so that's relatively mm -hmm. early by New York standards. Right. Uh, and then secondly, the, the first uh, plane that hit, uh, there seemed to, th there was time to get out. I think even having said that, there were a lot of people still in that building, including the fire and police personnel that right. were trying to come up. So, but, but my sense is that uh, I know on our floor, a lot of people got out. And as you came down, were you joined by people in other floors? Is it a common yeah. evacuation yeah. passage it's, down through the Well, building? the problem was there was only one stairwell open. 
uh, the, other, the other stairwells were blocked by smoke. And so you had one narrow stairwell, which is what led to the delay in the evacuation. And that's, you know, that's why it took so long to get out. We've told people in the rest of the country fairly regularly, the 50,000 people who work in the two trade centers, yeah. and you mm -hmm. say 8.45 in the morning is a little late for New York City. Is, do you, well, do you it's have a little any, early. Sorry, a little early. Yeah. Uh, do, you have, do you have a feeling that a lot of people hadn't gone into the building at this point? Uh, I know in our offices, uh, you know, we're a law firm, we start at 9.30, and, and a lot of people were not there yet. Uh, some of the businesses which operate on an earlier schedule, I'm sure everybody was there. Right. Um, but uh, I think that uh, the, the building wasn't as full as it could have been. If, if it had been two hours later, yeah. uh, it would have been much worse. And did, did you notice uh, today as you went to work or as you came out that it was more sparsely populated? Uh, it, it was about the same. I right. mean, it was, uh, it was about a normal day. I, I must confess I'm amazed at how calm you are, having been through not only the 1993 bombing, but this, and walked down by yourself, and you seem perfectly calm. Well, I'm happy to be here. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. and, 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 and how did people behave as you were evacuating? People, I mean, that, that was, it, I saw it again eight years ago and I saw it today. People were incredibly calm and they were helping other people. I fear that some of the people that were helping other people didn't make it out of that building uh, because, you know, they stayed behind and uh, fire personnel. Uh, so, but, but people, there was no panic that I saw. And in that environment, you have a narrow stairwell, a lot of people, you don't know what's going on. It's, it's a recipe for disaster, and the people are, are very, very calm. Could you tell at all, from your perspective on the 57th floor, that when the aircraft hits, which we think is about the 90th mm -hmm. floor, at right. least in the very top part of the right. building, how many floors were actually damaged at the time, or did people talk at all about the degree of damage that had been done just by the plane hitting before the building collapsed? It was a little hard to tell. You, you had some people coming down from the higher floors, um, so you know, people were able to get from the higher floors down through yeah. the damaged part of the yeah. building? Well, uh, that I don't know. Yeah, okay. My sense is that they came down from floors under 90 and were able to get down above 90. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, I know that in Tower 2, I talked to someone from Tower 2, and they were able to get down from uh, around the 88th floor. Uh, they were evacuating. When our tower was hit, they were evacuating, and then their tower was hit. Uh, and even so, they were able to get down because they were on the right side of the building. Right. So, and, and were you there when first Tower 2 and then Tower 1 collapsed? Uh, well, I, was, I just had exited the building and I was out on Church Street. And uh, Tower, uh, the way I saw it, Tower 2 came down, the South Tower came the down South first. Tower. And uh, I, I, did, I did see that, yeah. And, and then I assume you ran. I ran like hell. Yeah, we've seen, we've seen the video of people just yeah. running like yeah. hell in, in every direction to get as far yeah. away as possible. And I think the tragedy is that the, the, the police and fire personnel that were trying to help people out of that building the were right way. at ground zero when that happened. So you have to give them a lot of credit. As somebody said, we've said several times today, when the, when the folks is running one way, the police and the yeah. fire department are running, and are running the other way, trying, absolutely true. trying to help. Anything, uh, anything else aside from your survival which strikes you at this several hours after we went through this horrible experience? Well, I mean, you know, it, I think everybody in this country believes we've got to find the people that did it, and we've got to deal with them. And, you know, there is, I felt this way in 1993, and I think there is no stronger emotion. Uh, and, you know, I'm sorry, but uh, this cannot happen in this country. Many thanks, Tom. Really appreciate you helping us to understand. That's Tom Humphreys, who works in a law firm in the Trade Tower. He was in the in the North Tower on the 57th floor, and he walked out, and you've heard his story. And ABC's Charlie Gibson uh, has been trying to get a handle on some of the other stories which are similar. Charlie? Well, Peter, we've been trying to keep track of the injury situation as it exists. Uh, obviously, the numbers of those who have died today, it's going to be some time before we have any estimates, and properly, people in New York and in Washington around the Pentagon are not commenting. They shouldn't because we don't have any concept. But as you reported a few moments ago, Mayor Giuliani uh, did talk about the numbers of injured, saying at least, and these are very rough numbers, at least 2,100 people injured, 600 taken to hospitals, 1,500 walking wounded, he said, many of whom have been evacuated to New Jersey's Liberty State Park right across uh, the river, the Hudson River, from where the World Trade Centers were. And we have some further reports. Uh, ABC's Cynthia McFadden, who has been down in that area all day long, says that a triage center 
has been set up on the Chelsea Piers in New York City. Now, the Chelsea Piers is not a hospital area at all. It's an area of, that used to be uh, shipping piers along the Hudson River and lower Manhattan and uh, is now used for recreational purposes. There are tennis courts and golf driving ranges and uh, other things there, uh, meeting rooms, that kind of thing. It's a commercial operation, but uh, a triage center has been set up there and 50 makeshift operating rooms are being prepped and hundreds of ambulances are there waiting to take injured away from that facility, but they are doing treatment of people right uh, on the site or nearby uh, at Chelsea Piers. Reports from some of the hospitals uh, that are taking the injured. St. Vincent's Hospital here in New York, uh, the numbers again very rough, but an estimate of over 200 that have been taken in there, three dead, 18 in critical condition, and the most chilling quote that you can hear a Dr. Stephen Stern there at St. Vincent's Hospital quoted as saying hundreds of people, hundreds of people coming in have been burned from head to toe. Bellevue Hospital reporting more than 100 patients brought in, two dead. Uh, Beth Israel reporting earlier that 70 patients had been brought in. There are some um, estimates from hospitals in Virginia near the Pentagon uh, of dozens of people having been brought in there. And the I guess the heartening note in all this, uh, hospitals around New York who, that are not in the immediate vicinity of the World Trade Centers, um, people saying hundreds of donors are reportedly lined up to give blood outside Beth Israel Medical Center and some others uh, here in New York City. Um, and, and what I guess is a precursor of what is going to be the kinds of terrible news that we're going to get over the next few days, a spokesman at the medical examiner's office in New York City, the coroner's office, says that for now all of the bodies uh, that are being brought in, dead bodies, will go to the medical examiner's office on First Avenue here in New York. They say they have room for several hundred bodies and they are making room for more space since they anticipate more bodies will be brought in. Uh, one other note to mention, uh, at 4.30 this afternoon Eastern Time, the FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, says that it has activated all 10 of FEMA's regional headquarters around the country, uh, including those on the East Coast and then all the way west uh, as far as San Francisco and the state of Washington. They have activated all of those uh, regional headquarters, activated the Federal Response Plan, which uh, FEMA says brings together 28 federal agencies and the American Red Cross, and 12 urban search and rescue teams are being dispatched, eight of them are being sent here to New York and four to Washington, all deployed uh, to search for victims of what has happened today. And the Health and Human Services Department uh, has activated a national medical emergency system. It's really an unprecedented move, uh, but it could dispatch nearly 7,000 volunteer doctors, nurses, pharmacists, other medical staff to areas that have been affected by today's attacks. So that brings you up somewhat to date on uh, what's being done in terms of those who have been injured and provisions now being made for those who've been killed today. Peter? Thank you, Charlie, very much. Uh, I just uh, uh, try to keep the sort of sense or the proportion of casualties into some kind of, uh, in some kind of perspective. Uh, the gentleman with whom we've just been talking who worked in a law firm in the Northern Tower uh, said that after the first aircraft uh, hit in, in, in that tower, which is 8.48 Eastern Time. This is one of those where were you when moments I'm just utterly convinced will be that way in, in, term, in historical terms. Where were you when the first aircraft and then the second aircraft uh, crashed or were crashed into the Twin Trade Towers in New York City on this day, uh, the 11th of the month. And there's a timeline. If It's eight hours now since, uh, since this happened. And where Mayor Giuliani speaks just a few minutes ago, uh, they know of 2,100 people injured. And you see the pictures that the young man brought us from, from the absolute bottom, ground zero location, uh, where, the, where the tower not only crashed on itself, but then crashed down into the ground. There wasn't a sound there, except the sound of flames licking up from underground. And there was no sign of any person. And, and, and we know, as we've said it many times, that, that the fire department and the police department were going inwards, not outwards, when all of this happened. It's just absolutely impossible to get a grasp on. I'm very interested in, in, in the gentleman we spoke to a little while ago from the law firm, Tom, I've forgotten, I've probably gotten his last name. Say it out loud. 
Thank you, Tom Humphreys. Tom Humphreys, who said that it was his impression, at least in his building, in, in the North Tower, that a lot of people got out of that or had not arrived at work because it was, as he said, by New York standards, just a little earlier than people were accustomed. But, but when this young man, Mr. Sabi, uh, brought his, his video that he'd taken, he's on his, just got on his motorbike up and then walked in uh, to, to this scene on the ground, it is to realize that everybody's being kept, as Bill Lakemore subsequently confirmed for us, being kept at a distance from this at the side. And that's what's left on the left of the facade of the North Tower. ABC's Bob Jamison is downtown now. And Bob, we're looking at the pictures that have been brought to us by this young producer of a magazine. Can you just talk in general terms as you like? Well, generally speaking, Peter, uh, as the smoke uh, blows back and forth and uh, for a moment or two doesn't obscure both of the two World Trade Center buildings, you see so little. It's a, it's a tremendously eerie feeling to be in Lower Manhattan, looking down toward the tip of the island and seeing very few people, no traffic, uh, the smoke continuing to billow from these buildings, and nothing where there were once these two landmarks that drew everyone's attention, whether you drove or flew or came to New York by boat. Uh, but Peter, there is a new concern, according to authorities, at this moment here in Lower Manhattan, and that is the growing fear that another building in the World Trade Center complex, which was not struck by an airplane, is in danger of collapsing. That is number seven World Trade Center, somewhat shorter, somewhat uh, with somewhat fewer stories than uh, numbers one and two. There is a fire burning vigorously in the lower floors of that building, threatening the foundation. And the building was already damaged some six hours ago now uh, when the North Tower collapsed. And part of that process of the building collapsing struck and damaged number seven World Trade Center. So it's already was already at some risk before this fire grew as vigorously as it has. Uh, the authorities have now moved people several blocks away from that building. And we're just watching and waiting to see what happens. Bob, is number seven World Trade Center and I see you've now managed to come down to, to, to the ground, which suggests things loosen up a little bit. Um, is that where the mayor's emergency headquarters are? Peter, I don't, I, I honestly oh. don't know, but I will tell you that number seven is just behind number two. Uh, I'm in Tribeca now, and uh, you're seeing mostly smoke from the remnants of number one and number two, but there somewhere in that smoke is number seven. I don't know how big uh, number seven the World Trade Center is, is it, I, but uh, my recollection is a fairly low building, isn't it? Or is... y yes, I, I would guess, and I'm sorry to have to make a guess, that it is only about half as tall as number two. Okay. That, uh, that well, seems to me what, well, we'll what it appeared to be. We'll find out soon enough. I appreciate it, Bob. Thanks very much, Bob Jamison, who, as this day unveils, manages to get closer and closer. In a minute, we're going to talk to... Uh, to a freelance photographer who got really close today, but he's making a phone call at the moment. Take your time, Evan, and we'll come back to you. I can see where you've been just by the state of your equipment at this moment. Uh, but uh, as it has been about eight hours now, let us try to, to bring you up today with the horrendous sights and sounds of this attack on the United States and its citizens today. Here's ABC's John Donvan. We want to tell you what we know as we know it, but we just got a report in that there's been some sort of explosion at the The first the thing World any Trade television Center camera saw this morning was this, just before 9 o'clock, roughly 15 minutes earlier, an American Airlines jet hijacked from Boston had crashed into the south tower of the World Trade Center. There were 92 people on board. It does not appear that there's any kind of a, an effort up there yet. Now remember, oh my God. Oh my God. That looks like a second plane. Has just I did not see a plane go in. That, that Minutes later, the second plane, the plane second tower. The, the fireball ate up outside. the aircraft. The it was a United Airlines the flight, a 767 from, from Boston right to Los Angeles. The there had been 65 so people on board. Like some sort of a concerted... I was happened to look on the first tower, and I actually saw people waving where the first plane crashed through, and then it was unbelievable seeing this second jet come crashing into the second tower. What is going on? New York City was staggered. As soon as he got hit, I was thrown to a window. So I was very lucky to get out. There's a lot of people that didn't get out. There's a lot of people coming down the stairs, burnt up. 
was it's, it's bad. And still it wasn't over. This was the southern tower falling in on itself. It was now roughly an hour since the first attack. Meanwhile, it was beginning here in Washington. Another hijacked plane hits the Pentagon. U.S. officials are saying there was no warning, no indicators of any kind of a likely terrorist attack. Uh, number two, they say Pentagon officials uh, within the intelligence and the counterterrorism offices are now looking at this very intensely. ABC reporters across the city are beginning to hear the word terrorism. Uh, it seems obvious unofficially to people here that it was a terrorist attack, uh, but they obviously can't reach any firm conclusions at this point. So the Pentagon is engaged, and I'm sure law enforcement is, uh, but they, they say they had no warning. Report piles on report. Okay, there's been an explosion of some kind uh, that shook the ground of the Capitol. Uh, we all heard it. Everybody ran for cover. We don't know where it was. We don't see the smoke yet. Everybody's saying, get back. We're running. We're running. We're running. We're running. They're screaming at us to get back. On television, it looked like it was happening all over. 10.28 a.m., New York City, and in the shadow of the one remaining tower, a snatch of conversation between a reporter and a rescuer. Why are they pulling us out of here? Because the Angel Tower is leaning. The North, the North Tower is leaning. Fight, march quick. Oh my God, there it goes! I looked up as soon as we got across the street. I looked up, I saw the building start, the tower start to buckle. I just tur turned and ran, ducked down, put a jacket over my head. Three or four of us huddled together, and uh, it was uh, just black everywhere. Washington, the White House is evacuated. The Office of Personnel Management says all federal office buildings in the Washington area have been evacuated and closed. The employees sent home immediately. The evacuation order creates instant gridlock in downtown Washington. The president was not in the city. He was in Florida visiting a school. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. Officials at this end are not confirming that the president's plane is going to, to Andrews. We don't know if it's going to Andrews or some other location. All they've said is that he will convene a National Security Council meeting, and we don't know where that will take place either. Obviously, they want to keep a lot of people guessing as, as to the president's whereabouts. Now it was lunchtime, and yet more terrible news is coming in. Another United Airliner with 45 people on board has crashed south of Pittsburgh, presumably another victim of terrorism. We talked to a couple of people who actually witnessed the plane going down and said it was quite devastating, went right down into the woods. They saw all sorts of debris flying out into the woods and into the trees, and it, uh, it's quite a, quite a devastating scene from what we're told. At this point, it is hard to believe we're still in the same day that began with this picture. National Guard units are out. Washington is shut down. Airports in the U.S. and Canada are closed. And the death toll, still uncountable, is also unimaginable. John Donvan, ABC News, Washington. Excellent report from John Donvan pulling together uh, this day, which has so much immediacy, so much history, such magnitude to it, and touches every American. And as I turn around on occasion to look at the, the computer screen behind me, I find emails coming in from people in other countries, um, uh, Canada and Europe included, uh, from friends and from families and colleagues, all expressing this this deep empathy and sympathy for people here today uh, who had friends and acquaintances, but just seeming at, at whatever distance to appreciate uh, what is happening, even though they were not close to it. Um, we're now joined by a young man who was very close to it again. This is Evan Fairbanks. He's a freelance photographer. Uh, interestingly enough, you and I were just talking about journalists' emotions uh, uh, at a time like this, and the last thing journalists can afford to do is to fall prey to their emotions at a time like this because it's too hard in the middle of a story. But you were very close this morning and photographing on assignment for a church when things began to happen. So we're going to show your videotape, if we may, though. You're, you're principally sure. a still photographer? 
Uh, for both? Still and video. Okay. Can we just look at what your first video is and explain it to us? Um, I walked out of Trinity Church after we had a, a, a blackout in our studio, and one of the studio managers grabbed one of our cameras when we knew what was happening. And I went out and was shooting Aftermath. Good God. And I suddenly saw a plane flying into my viewfinder and said, gee, it's kind of close for that to be here now, and then realize what happened. Yeah. And uh, We'll run this again, because I think this is the, this is, will we run that again, Roger?